Hello, I am Yves Bellego, Director of Network Strategy at Orange Group, and I will uh, share with you our st strategy on NAV and the results of the uh, proof of concept we have done recently. First, um, to give you a few, um, a few words about our NAV strategy, and just to say that um, NAV is on um, our strategy on the network side, so no doubt this is a real uh, great important topic. And just the title, Proof of Concept, just gives you an idea where we are today as um, uh, most of operators. We are at the stage of Proof of Concepts, so not much deployed today in our networks, and we are still in the, um, in the phase of uh, lab testing. Uh, my job, I work on the network side, so just one again a message, um, as already mentioned today, in the companies between IT and network, there is quite still um, different organization, different um, methods of working, different processes and so on. So I'm really come from the uh, network aspect and more especially even the mobile aspect. Um, and my job is to prepare the, um, um, the plan for evolution of our networks in all our countries, the big ones like France and also the smaller ones that um, like what we have uh, in Eastern Europe and in Africa. And especially not that much on the enterprise, but more on the mobile and, and the fixed um, coming from the access side. And in fact, the access part is taking most of our energy, but uh, NAV is still um, one of the big uh, things to do. And the picture just uh, to, um, to illustrate that uh, we are just uh, doing tests right now and also that we believe that NAV will uh, come step by step. So we would have uh, quite great difficulties to say when exactly we will have uh, one first feature uh, that is uh, using NAV or not in our networks because that will really uh, come uh, um, step by step. And I, to be honest, I really believe, for example, that uh, things we buy today they are a kind of NFV, but we just do not care because we buy uh, almost everything from the same uh, supplier. So, um, um, as I said, we believe that NFV um, and SDN is one of the key transformations. So this is what, uh, and my job basically is to try to translate what does that mean into our internal plans, what does that mean into the coming years in terms of uh, investment, capex, opex, organization, and so on, and what will be the benefit of uh, uh, NAVSDN. That's not that easy. Um, I will not have, uh, sorry for that, but I will not have nice slides with a very uh, clearly articulated um, um, a strategy, we, there are still a lot of questions to, uh, to answer, so the, and, and the, first, uh, the first way to answer that for us is just make some tests. We start in the labs and we'll see what, what we can, uh, uh, when we are ready to go into the fields. And the way to present that to our top management, we, uh, yes, we present that as uh, NAV being part of everything going into the cloud. Uh, within, within Orange, we have um, structured the IT applications, the, um, service delivery platforms, what we call service platforms, and the networks. And the message we provide is that all that is moving uh, into the cloud, and NAV is the, um, the part of, on the networks of that move to the cloud. And SDN is, in fact, uh, the way to present that to our top management, and it is SDN is the technological enabler. They do not need to know anything about the, the details of SDN. And again, just to highlight, that's not for the dedicated for the, for the um, enterprise market, which is a dedicated line of business with its own um, uh, dedicated analysis. Uh, so at the moment, we are, we are preparing that with a different proof of concept. And I said um, uh, this is done at corporate level, which means that we have nothing in in the um, in the field uh, in a country. All that is in the labs today. We are doing various uh, POCs, and um, the goals of that is first to get the, um, our hands on that, to know w what, uh, what is feasible and what is ready today. The second point that was already mentioned is what is the impact on operations. And that is, to be honest, is not uh, fully documented today. We have quite a big question mark and still a lot of work on that aspect. And um, what we need to anticipate also a bit is what, what do we need to specify to get the right infrastructure in the coming years for the future development of uh, um, NAV functions. So what I would like to share with you now is just a few words about our proof of concepts. And um, I have only two slides on the strategy because that is really uh, still a um, work in progress. So on the proof of concept, starting from, from the um, upper left, what is the, um, the, the first thing we, we did and is easier is with a single, um, single function to virtualize. That's, that is really just the first step. 
Um, and the main functions um, are the, uh, EP, uh, I would say, as, as everyone, the EPC, the IMS, and we do also some work on the uh, content delivery networks. Uh, what we are um, tooling, uh, doing today, and I will uh, just develop a bit, is on the um, uh, right side, uh, the um, upper right side, is a multi-vendor with an orchestrator. And we believe that that is a really important step because having everything that is mono-vendor, basically that's not that much different from today. Uh, because what we buy today is a full solution from a vendor and what, and what is integrated inside, whether it, it is using uh, standardized, standardized hardware or not, we just do not care, that's just their business. And what we believe, the um, one very important step is when we will have uh, diff two different virtualized functions from different vendors on, uh, running on the same um, uh, virtualized uh, uh, with, with the same orchestrator and running on, on the same um, virtualized machines. So this is the, what we are doing today. The one on the bottom uh, the left is something I am, to be honest, I am not that fully at ease with. For example, the virtuali virtualized home gateway, virtualized CP, this is something that uh, everyone is talking since uh, several years. Uh, we've done several um, uh, research in labs and so on. And the big difficulty on, on, the, on these ones is going from um, these initial steps to something really in the market. Um, and I do not fully understand why we, we, this step is so difficult. Uh, there might be one explanation did, uh, specific for Orange that um, our main market, France, is really a market on the residential market of boxes. So all operators, we as Orange, we have our own live box. Our competitors have the same. And we advertise on the box itself. So the, the box is an element that has real, uh, that is understood. And the customer, they buy, they buy a box. So if we go to a solution where there is no box, that is a bit difficult to, ma to manage for our uh, marketing teams. So that may be one reason, but that is a bit specific to the French market. In other markets that are not that much markets where the box is really um, marketed and, and highlighted, um, it, should be, it should be faster. But that's, um, for me, that's, that is one, um, one aspect that is, um, that is quite ready, but still um, not being deployed. And on the um, and other works, which to be honest, that, that's more um, uh, the teams, uh, dedicated teams working on that, and I'm not that much knowledgeable, is really developing the infrastructure because something we have been pushing for and we still uh, push for is to get standardized and interoper interoperable solutions. So we need to have the infrastructure that is uh, that provides interoperability and to have different uh, functions coming from different vendors running on one single. Um, uh, uh, infrastructure. So a few words. I have not good at managing time. How much time do I get? Still, fifteen. Good. Um, so w what what is um, running today? So we have the uh, the VNF infrastructure. We have the uh, virtualized functions, and uh, what we have been been uh, been, uh, been testing is to have different virtualized functions, and all that providing the um, IMS functions. So with the core, with the, um, with the IS, uh, with an orchestrator that comes from a vendor that is different from the uh, virtualized functions. Uh, and all that uh, using VMware, because this is what, um, what exists today. So that, um, that proof of concept is running right now. And um, we also try to, to in integrate an OSS from a, even a different vendor. To be honest, that part on the OSS is not that, um, that easy. Uh, and we still have uh, to work on, on that one. Um, so what we have, um, the, the outcome from that, we have some very good news that the um, things that we were quite uh, cautious about, scalability, uh, resilience, that proved to work, so to, to work, that, that's um, very good news. Um, what we were expecting, maybe not um, really fully operational today, is the plug, plug and play and how the, um, uh, uh, we can just... Um, uh, increase the capacity, and the overall configuration remains quite complex, and that is something we are um, uh, we will um, work a lot on because we have seen, in fact, all especially mobile operators, we have seen that in, in case of um, um, uh, a failure on, on features like the IMS or the HLR and so on, the business continuity management is something that is really tricky, and having the right tools for the operational teams to really understand what's happening on the network when we have one big crisis is something very, very tricky. So that is one aspect we will have to, to work on. Uh, when we come to the core, core networks, uh, we are used to have these, all, all, all these um, 
uh, functions to work very fine, and when there is one single uh, crisis, that's very, very difficult to have the right reaction from, from the operational teams um, uh, to bring back service in, uh, in times of minutes instead of hours. Um, so that is just uh, just to to share that I, I expect that's not that much different to to what um, other big uh, operators are, are doing, but really believe that this is the um, the first step that is needed before we can put anything into the field in either with, whether it is a big or a small country that does not change. We need first to go to that um, uh, to that step. Uh, maybe now a few words about uh, the um, uh, why do we believe that uh, NAVSDN is a, a big topic on the strategy and that is something we, uh, and, and basically one, one question is why should we talk about uh, NAVSDN to our CEO uh, compared to other topics? And, 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 and we did. And the reason is, uh, yeah, sorry, first, uh, first some conclusions are just on the, um, this box. So, um, uh, in addition to that, the, the interfaces, they still need to be defined. So we have been active into the various standardization bodies and we will continue to be because we want to have this, the interfaces to be uh, clearly defined and to have the uh, virtual functions really independent from the orchestrator. And we want to have one orchestrator that does not come from the uh, uh, VNF uh, function suppliers. Um, the operational aspect that was mentioned, I already um, uh, talked a bit about it, uh, that will imply also changes in the organization and we are not yet uh, there at all. Uh, it, it will also have huge implications on the processes uh, on the, in the operational teams. Um, Bank, you mentioned that um, big operators are slow movers. I would say yes and no. Uh, I would say typically for us, yes in France. Orange France is a big company with huge teams uh, today dedicated on IT, on core network, on access, on transmission, transport, with a lot of different silos. That is what is uh, the optimal today. That will not be in a few years from now. And that change will, will be difficult. But we have also operations in quite smaller countries. If I take, for example, Mo Moldova uh, in uh, Eastern Europe. And for example, Moldova was for us kind of a um, uh, live uh, trial. We did the world first on uh, HD voice, for example, because in Orange Moldova, we can do uh, upgrade the whole entire network quite easily. It's a sm small network and also uh, quite um, a small team, so easy to make uh, live um, things live in Moldova. But even in these small countries, we are not, uh, we are not yet, uh, we have not yet started the journey to have the um, operational teams uh, move. So we will continue the, these uh, various steps. We will work also to continue on the standardization body, and we will work into the internal transformation. But all that is. Um, uh, is just uh, starting right now. Uh, now, coming to the, um, yes, th that's nice, but what, why is it such a big, um, a big thing? Uh, that slide is what I used to, um, to show uh, internally, uh, well, uh, a few years ago. Our target was basically simple. Uh, very high broadband on the access, LTE-based and fiber-based, uh, IP, uh, IP transport and CDN, and uh, on the right, we put all network control functions with service platforms and IT in the cloud. That is not anymore our, um, our, our exact vision. One, one thing that has, the, um, the left part has not changed, um, bro broadband, uh, access for the customers, IP and CDN based, that, that is still valid. But the thing that has changed is, uh, in fact, uh, on the left. And just to summarize, that um, would be quite obvious. Today we have a lot of functions, we want to go to virtualization. But look at the right. Our vision today is that, in fact, uh, virtualization and development of cloud will be not only in large data centers, but also in network points of presence. So what we expect, and that is um, our long-term target. I, have, I would um, not be able to give any date for that, but we expect the cloud to expand uh, between big data centers and in um, uh, regional and uh, points of presence in the networks and to have features that are split um, uh, between these two uh, locations. And this is what, at the end, we believe bring the highest uh, efficiency. And, things, uh, and there are a few things I was um, maybe a bit too shy, even I did not put into the slides, is with, on the benefits of um, NAVSDN. Well, I would say, as, as already said, uh, we do not believe um, uh, in uh, big benefits in CapEx. So in our plans, there is to, roughly there is no change in capex on the on the network control. That is not the main the main goal. The main goal is scalability, flexibility, with the the, um, the implication on quality of service. And one thing I I even um, almost um, never put on slide is 
we, will, we believe that that will be an enabler for new services, but we do not have clear views exactly um, today what, what that will be. And for example, with uh, NFV, we, we could have in, um, um, uh, today we have the EPC packet core that is one big, um, uh, one big feature for the entire network. We could have in a few years from now, for example, we, have, uh, we can set up an EPC on a local area that, that could be um, a campus or e even for an event. This is the type of things that will be feasible, technically feasible. The, the, the thing we still have to work on, on quite a lot is uh, from that uh, uh, possible use case, can we build a real business case? Is something we can really put into practice and will it bring value um, uh, to, to our customers to have this type of capability and to make offers based on these capabilities? So that was almost in time what, what I had uh, to share with you today. And I still have one minute, maybe for a question. <laughs>